I'm coming from the Zambia network of young people living with HIV, ZNYP+, plus, uh, which is uh, based in the capital of Zambia, Lusaka. That's where the headquarters is supported by the global network of young people living with HIV, GNP+, plus, and also uh, yeah, known as the Y+. Plus. Thank you. So we're just going to look at the uh, dis definitions of uh, the two terms, the stigma and discrimination, quickly. Uh, stigma is, refers to unfavorable beliefs and attitudes directed towards uh, someone or something. Then the discrimination is the treatment of an individual or a group with partiality or prejudice. So. I'm just going to give an example of myself when I was enrolling for the 80th grade. Uh, yeah, back then, I went with someone who was supporting me with the procedures. Then when I reached, the principal looked at me because I've got skin problem. So one of my experiences was bad because the principal, not knowing that I, uh, I was able to understand English, told the person I was with that, you know, he shouldn't be getting contact with other students, other pupils at school, <laughs> because maybe he thought maybe I can give, it, give my rush to some other students at the institute, the school. So let's just go back to the next slide, where we look at the effects of stigma and discrimination. As for my part, uh, it was really uncomfortable for me to concentrate on my studies as well as um, my interaction at that school because from the start I was already discriminated and throughout it actually affected my goals but of which I'm, I'm regaining, yes. So let's just look at the effects of stigma in the community. So, we have poor health services access, um, poor access uh, to health services. Uh, this, this includes the, the communities like people living with HIV and LGBTQI community. They have got some, uh, in, in our country, we've got that stigma I think, especially from the health workers, where when someone who's gay or lesbian comes to the facility and health workers will be like, no, we don't offer services of such people because you know, it's a complicated thing. They don't understand. So uh, these people lack access to health services and also SRH services of which is a bad, um, uh, okay, yeah. Then we, we got to poverty, uh, which is also mainly affecting the community where I'm coming from, where someone is um, intelligent, skilled, but wants to access uh, maybe education at a university, then they will look at the financial status and they'll say, uh, no, uh, we have, you have to tip us this amount and with uh, your situation, we can't help you unless you provide money so that your child or your grandchild comes in college or school. So it also affects uh, the community, especially the young people. Uh, then there's risky situations and behavior. The risky situations are that when People are denied of SRH services. They get exposed to STIs and HIV. And looking at the situations especially, you find that many people who are mostly discriminated or stigmatized are not doing well in terms of treatment, especially people living with HIV and also those who are in the LGBTQI community because they get exposed to S, uh, STIs especially. When he goes or she goes to the uh, health facility, they, she'll only find or he'll only find the condoms and not lubricants, especially for the gay people. 
and you know those those things are denied to them uh, where I'm coming from. It's not common to give someone who's gay such services. Uh, we go to violence uh, just because someone is uh, maybe disabled or differently abled, of which we call it. And then the, the advantage of it is maybe not really violence as indirect, maybe indirect violence which cannot be seen clearly by the <coughs> community, but can be identified by someone who's uh, sensitive to such areas. Well, for, for the violence again, there's also the HIV violence, which is uh, in a home where you're staying and you are the only person who's living with HIV, then you are, you, you are denied of maybe access to uh, maybe social, social activities and you want them, or maybe social skills, but then that, uh, because you're HIV positive, then you are denied of the services and the opportunities at home. Uh, there is discrimination, which is uh, a broad thing. Discrimination uh, falls under someone being rejected or humiliated or maybe isolated directly, not indirectly. And that really affects their mental uh, stability in terms of mental health, uh, uh, coping up with the mental health. Which, which also causes depression and some other PTSD conditions. Uh, there is uh, harassment and abuse. Harassment in terms of, um, uh, I can say, people, young people living with HIV, yeah, maybe they go to, to like have, get access to the health facility and they find this rude person and, you know, they just say, oh, okay, sit there, we'll wait, we'll wait until you are attended to, but then this person keeps on passing by and going to the next person who comes later after you. And, you know, if you, you, you can't report to anywhere if you don't have any information with you. Okay, so this is actually the marginalization. This is the social, economic, and legal discrimination. So the gay, the, um, the gay community, uh, this is what it's saying. Like, uh, when, you, when someone opens up to you and say, oh, I'm gay, you know, especially in, in my country, they'll be like, oh no, you're going to hell, or maybe you, you, it's a big sin for you to be gay and all that, you're not normal, you're not human, all those things. But you know, um, we are all humans and we need to respect one another's feeling. And this picture is actually uh, talking about the things that gay people or LGBTQI community face in, in the community. So these are some of them. And as Y plus and ZNY P plus will come up with some activities which are engaging LGBTQI communities and supporting them in terms of maybe service provision and also capacity. So these are the examples from the community. Um, again, it's, uh, I mean on discrimination and stigma. So these are the two pictures which are showing Someone may, might have disclosed their status, and then this is what he gets in return. And the, the, the other picture is maybe talking about someone who, who is lesbian, and people are just, you know, they have, got, they have isolated themselves from her and not providing support and other things that this person might be needing. So what can we do about stigma? So we can protect the anti-discrimination law, uh, discriminalization, challenging violence. So these are some of the activities that we can put in action. Yeah, though they have been running, but uh, they're not very uh, 
sustainable to the affected communities. Then there's also inclusion, uh, which is uh, key populations in healthcare services, service design and implementation, stigma and discrimination reduction, and a goal in national strategies. There's also empower uh, to understand rights, to act on violation, and also just to add up is um, to also make make people excuse me make people understand more about HIV and AIDS and also LGBTQI uh, communities. Then there's also uh, educate to address fears and to change attitudes. So educate is more like uh, you give counseling or you. you you, you talk to the person who's on the affected side to make them feel comfortable, uh, maybe accept the way they are because once they start hiding, it becomes a problem to them because they might be facing a lot of things inside their minds. And also to change attitudes is to educate the community on issues, or issues, or issues on discrimination and stigma. Uh, by working hand in hand with the uh, gatekeepers, such as the community leaders, uh, the teachers, and um, the headmen. Yeah, so they can understand more on these things. And also to add up is to uh, put up advocacy uh, capacity building trainings to the affected communities so that they can advocate for their rights and also have access, full access to health services and also be respected by the community. So let's stand up for stigma. Uh, one, we have to talk openly about HIV and stigma to uh, make clarifications, especially in the community, our society, which uh, indirectly changes things slowly by slowly until it becomes worse, like, like uh, discrimination. Choose supportive language that is not stigmatizing. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you are seated, you are gay, and you are seated in a health facility, and they call you by your, your, your status. They call you, oh, you who are gay, come. The, your, 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 your card is now up for checking or for services. And you know, you, it, it, it can be very disturbing and confusing and also uncomfortable for you. Also speak out to correct myth and stereotypes. So there, there are a lot of myths, especially for the LGBTQI communities, as well as HIV and AIDS, which for HIV, it's slowly reducing because there is more info information being provided by the, to the community <coughs> and more activities which are engaging people to understand HIV and AIDS. And that's what we should do as well as in the LGBTQI community. And we can, uh, like ZNYP Plus has come up with capacity building activities and awareness programs for community engagement and also the affected community like people, uh, young people living with HIV by impacting them with uh, advocacy uh, capacity as well as public speaking and some other capacities that they may need in terms of SRH and um, human rights. So educate yourself and others. <coughs> Once you know, you share the information and that's what, what, that's what we do with our peer educators in the communities and at facility level. We train them, then they train others, and so is the procedure going. And we are about, we're planning to expand into other different parts of the country so that um, this, uh, the stigma and discrimination can be controlled. So, no more stigma, my presentation was short. <laughs> Thank you.